the Grumman A6 Intruder was a twin jet, twin seat aircraft. As an all weather attack aircraft able to operate from carriers, the Intruder fulfilled a special role within the Navy's strike force, able to strike enemy targets regardless of weather or light conditions. Later on, its capacities were also expanded to counter a new emerging threat, thus opening the stage for the EA-6 Prowler. In 1956, the US Navy decided to approach the industry with specifications calling for a two-man, all-weather, low-altitude aircraft focusing on close air support and interdiction to be launched from their carriers. This meant that the plane had to be able to sustain the hydraulic catapults on the SX-class carriers and a new generation of steam catapults. Grumman moved to take on the challenge, as did seven other companies, with 12 designs in total. One standout feature of the Grumman design was the side-by-side -side seating for the crew, rather than a tandem setting, and that it featured no fixed gun. After consultation, the Navy announced in early January 1958 that Grumman got the job. The first prototype based on the proposed specs was the A2F-1. The rounded nose did little to allow the plane to fit into the accepted conventions of the time, that being that the pointy end must always face the enemy, but the intruder's design was fit for purpose. After all, the large rounded nose allowed the aircraft to house an advanced search and track radar array required for its job. In April 1960, it had its first flight. As testing continued, in 1962, the now christened A6A intruder began its carrier trials aboard USS Enterprise. It was also around this time that the intruder was pushed into a new role, that of early electronic warfare with the A2F-1Q, later known as the EA-6A, the basis for the Prowler. Coming out in the early 1960s, the intruder did not have to wait long for its baptism of fire, Vietnam. Used by both the Navy and the Marine Corps, it also saw service in Lebanon, the First Gulf War and Bosnia, before being phased out. Before going through the various models and how to identify them, I'd like to show you the overall design specs that generally remain consistent through the models. For this, I will use the uh, A6A variant, as the plane is a template for all future models. The forward section of the fuselage has a rounded radome, the cockpit sitting on top in a semi faired position, with a straight back running towards the vertical stabilizer, while the lower half tapers upwards. The vertical stabilizer is slanted at a higher angle than the rear and hooks over the rudder. The large rear and upward sliding cockpit canopy sits right above the engine air intakes for the Pratt & Whitney J-52 turbojets. The swept wings are placed just above these. On the wings you will find slats on the leading edge, split air brakes on the trailing edge tips, and fowler flaps running towards the fuselage on the trailing edge. Additional air brakes are set behind the wings, but these were soon deactivated, even on the A variant. Also note the tricycle landing gear, the angle of attack lights, the foldable wings, a tail hook, and of course, this is the Navy we are talking about, an outward falling ladder incorporated into the engine nacelle. Under the wings you will find those hard points for drop tanks and ordnance. The A6A featured one of the most advanced navigation and attack systems of the time known as DIAN or Digital Integrated Attack and Navigation Equipment. It included navigational, ballistic, inertial, radar, communication and control systems. As we go through the following models, remember that I will focus on the main production types. All A6 models are based, in a way, on the A model, converted and improved as time goes by. There will be many minor differences over the years, but I'll focus on the main external ones to make it easy for you to identify the type in the future in either museums or on pictures. So next up is the A6B. Very few visual differences appear in the 6B since these planes were converted from the A. The B brings an important avionics update, however. The aircraft received seed capability allowing the use of anti-radiation missiles. It was thus suited on taking on a new generation of radar-operated anti-aircraft defenses. Now, this was already tested on the A variant, but the B is the dedicated platform for this. The 6B eventually came out in three different packages, Mod 0, Mod 1 and Pat Arm. 
as you've certainly noticed, this is a US American plane, so get ready for a lot of acronyms, but I'll work through those and annotate them where need be. The Mod Zero variant can be differentiated from the earlier A variants due to a number of diamond shaped APS 107A and B homing antennas on the upper side of the radome and the lower forward part of the engine nacelle, the wing and the stabilizer tip. This gave a 360 degree coverage and allowed the aircraft to locate radar anti-aircraft sites. With the introduction of the ALR55 antenna, the original APS 107s were substituted, covered or disconnected. The Mod 1 package, also known as TIAS or Target Identification and Acquisition System, added small antennas on the nose. They don't look pretty but cover the forward section of the aircraft. The rear was covered by the addition of a faceted antenna mount on the bottom of the rudder and an additional fairing was added to the wingtips to cover the rearward side sections. Five aircraft were thus modified. Then we are coming to PAT-ARM, standing for Passive Angle Track Anti-Radiation Missile. The PAT system was designed to enhance the accuracy of the anti-radiation missile by keeping the payload on target, homed in on the radar source, even after it was turned off. Since it continued to use the same antennas with the APR25 receiver, there is no real standout visual distinction from the A variant that I can find. However, you can set them aside due to the small battle damage assessment antennas forward and aft, if you can find them. It is the only B-type to retain all weather capability. Only three were converted from the early A6A production run. Moving on to the A6C, again a conversion from the A. This model introduced electro-optical sensors for low-level attacks even in darkness. One of the new systems, called TRIM or Trails Road Interdiction Multi-Sensor, is easy to identify. Look for a pod under the main fuselage. This aircraft was designed to specifically target truck convoys operating at night. Initially meant to be added to the Lockheed P-2 Neptune, the intruder was finally chosen and 12A variants were converted into A6Cs. As the final model in the A6 series, the A6E features a new Northern ANAPQ 148 multi-mode radar and an improved ANASQ 133 computing suite. The deceptive radar jammer moves to the wing route instead of the boom location. The wing fence moves inboard of the inboard pylon rather than being outboard of it. And there is also a relief tube for each crew member, just so you know. The A6E drops trim and came in three variants, Canes, Tram and Tram DRS. Canes, standing for Carrier Airborne Inertial Navigation System, had the same litten navigation system as the F-14A Tomcat. An air scoop was added to the upper aft fuselage with an exhaust below it for an extra air conditioning unit. There is also an additional air scoop on the starboard side behind the canopy. It also features a new forward-facing nose landing gear light arrangement, where the anti-collision lights were removed and placed under the engine nacelles. Tram then carried over from Canes and should be seen as a progressive upgrade. The A6E Tram, short for Target Recognition Attack Multi-Sensor, was installed under the radome and was partially retractable. Its use was very similar to Trim, but a more advanced system. And then we come up to the final variant, which was the Tram DRS. A direction and ranging set was added. Here is where I run into a bit of a problem. As far as I can tell, the change was internal and does not show externally. And it was simply an upgrade to the pre-existing Tram setup. If you know of a visual difference that can be found on the outside, please let me know. Eventually over 170 A6E airframes were delivered and over 220 intruders were brought up to A6E standards. Throughout this time the Navy also opted to re-wing a lot of their A6Es. On the majority of these aircraft the original metal wing was substituted with a new composite wing. The wing was supposed to be stronger and more resistant to corrosion, however there were also delays in the re-winging process due to some structural failures. While the fleet was being re-winged, it also went through SWIP, that is the Systems Weapons Improvement Program. This integrated stand of weapon capabilities into the aircraft and also improved the survivability systems of the platform. 
Although there were plans to further upgrade the machines to the A6F and following models, this never materialized and the E model is essentially the zenith of the intruder design. However, there were a couple of more systems that would be interesting to look at. And I picked out here the KA6D, which is a little bit unknown. The main systems were ripped out of this aircraft and really it became a completely different platform. You can often identify it because it has a lot of drop tanks on the pylons. This aircraft was an in-flight refueling platform. That's why you will find this triangular fairing below and behind the wing. From there the fuel line could be extended. You won't be able to tell from the outside, but internal changes to the bulkheads and wings gave extra space for additional fuel tanks, and this necessitated a whole lot of internal changes. Even the actuators for the control surfaces had to be changed, but at the end this allowed the aircraft to carry 10 to 15,000 pounds of giveaway fuel that could be added. Although largely forgotten next to the intruder and the prowler, and certainly not as visible in the public eye, the aircraft performed admirably, and at least 71 intruders were converted at different times into these body tankers. So this completes our overview of the A6 intruder. I know some of you might wonder, what about the EA6 Prowler? That's a quite important aircraft as well, right? And it's based on the intruder platform. Yes, it is. But I'm going to come to that in a future recognition guide because there is a lot that can be said about that aircraft and it really merits its own video. Thank you to my patrons and channel supporters for their support. Your contribution allows me to keep my channel going. And if you enjoyed this video and like my content, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon or channel memberships for a dollar or two a month. If you cannot support me, I understand. In that case, please consider sharing this video. That helps a great deal. Subscribing and as always, have a great day and see you in the sky.